my topic will be in discussion will be on this i am path breaking concept for primordial promotion of diabetes believe me or not i have been professor for so many years it never occurred to me till march of this month promotion of diabetes we have been always treating diabetes the lots of drugs you know i just listen to the insulin oral drugs but i don't know why none of, i don't know where would thought about promotion it occurred to me how to get promotion of diabetes so so estimation and projections of the number of people with diabetes in different editions millions so it is a problem what you going to face you are how to prune that so 2019 the prevalence of diabetes was 463 million in 2020 it was 536 that is history was increased and to we are expecting 2045 783 million 54% increase so it is a it's phenomenal increase in the prevalence of diabetes pre-diabetes approximately 380 million which is likely to increase to about 480 million by 2040. So it is a frightening, diabetes is an epidemic of unprecedented magnitude and as, as IDF president told me, he calls it a pandemic. So we are fan- facing it from epidemic to pandemic, then we must take some steps to prevent this diabetes development. How we can we have discussed with you and the share your opinion also. Now, all of us know detection of diabetes does not mean prevention of diabetes. You have this screen like this. Of course, it's laudable. You will see a defeat diabetes. A number of people are talking on that. All over the country, all over the world, if they say beat diabetes, beat pre-diabetes, let us fight diabetes, dismantle diabetes, demystify diabetes, and dismantle diabetes. These are all the words used to say detection of diabetes. But what I am going to talk will be now will be these methods are unmasking already existing diabetes. What we are, what we are going to concentrate here and I am going to share with you what we need is primordial prevention of diabetes. That means that disease should not develop. So that is my first introduction. So how to go about this primordial prevention of diabetes is that, that now I will discuss. Now, number of studies we always quote abroad what they are doing, what steps can be taken for primordial prevention of diabetes. Evidence. Now I will share here with you. this is a work done in the United States, Diabetes Prevention Program. What they said was in September 2001, this is a very, very important slide, the Centers for Disease Control and proceedings in all of us know is very important organization issued a press note or release stating that twin epidemics of diabetes and obesity continue to threaten the health of Americans. Genian thinking about that. And diabetes prevention program was introduced. Very good effort. But what happened? Here, surprisingly, in 2001, it was 6.1% when they introduced the diabetes prevention program. And when they analyzed data after 10, after 10 years, 2 to 21, 20 years, about 10.5 percent had Americans have diabetes. So whatever program they made is an utter failure because this attempt they made by the CDC is almost double from 2001 to 2021. So this, this now then having we come to conclusion, this study and this program is, I think it's obvious it's a failure. Obviously, this is not a successful program. And what could be done? Then what could be the successful program? I think I am I am sharing with you my opinion. You are welcome to give your suggestion. Let me see at the end what we are going to do. Now, is it possible to achieve diabetes prevention? That is what we are aiming for. As I told you initially, whom to focus? We want free generation. Whom to focus? This, fortunately, this is an answer given here by Lies Kingo. He said, female gender is key for diabetes prevention. I don't know why they told only poor females, they were told about male, and they are key for diabetes prevention. But there must be some reason why female gender is key for diabetes prevention. Because here, as you will see here, 
how we can discuss about this point if you take a developmental origin of of disease of any any life it is like this the worm is well supplied with the mitochondria but the sperm contains a few and even those few do not persist in the offspring that shows sperm plays a very little role that is why we probably the told worm is well is very important in this what happens at fertilization it is only the nucleus of the spermatozoa that enters the worm thus all the cytoplasm mitochondria and mitochondria dna are exclusively maternally oriented so we all depends on our mother for ever the whole thing comes from mother what going to happen to the, to our children like like anybody so this is that's why they said female gender is more important that that less a king now we'll see here that part is over now what david barker told in 19th in the last century he conceptualized the body's susceptibility to life still disease was program intrauterine he almost i mean supported the idea given by less king the intrauterine programming is very very important how now we we'll look at this statement here the stressed programming is a process whereby stimuli metal fuels or stresses that occur at critical a sensitive period of fetal development permanently change the structure physiology and metabolism which produce for individuals to this adult adult life so feet this is very clear i is lies king told like that and dead bark has said feet large adult diseases now we got two points with this one female second thing feet large adult is some evidence we can get how to go for the prevention of diabetes so with this background now somebody may question me what about genetic parents are diabetic children may have the diabetes father diabetic grandfather they may have okay it is there it is true it is not it is not i am not disputing it development origin of health and disease the phenotype here genes will be definitely play a role for any diseases here and then most importantly most partly here intrauterine environment and again when a child is born adult age post natal when both are called epigenetic that means for any disease you must have basic in some gene wise there and up to epigenetics but what what we are going to discuss now is that only gene is important or epigenetics are important maybe both may be important but which one is more dominant will be epigenetics here you'll see here genetic loads the gun maybe there is not i'm not disputing you may have a genetic background from from parents or elders and the environment triggers stuff that shows without environment genetic won't, genetic won't produce a disease so that is another basic information which i want to share and then we will proceed here now friends ladies and gentlemen now we are going to talk about the diabetes mellitus here it is in a destiny as i told you it is genetic or is it intrauterine environment which is more important Gen- genetics or intrauterine environment now we dispute discuss and come to conclusion now you now what happens here exposure to diabetic environment in utero associated with the increased occurrence of impaired glucose tolerance a defective insulin secretory response and adult offsprings independent of genetic predisposition to type 2 diabetes this this statement is very very clear made about 2 3 years ago that genetic predisposition to type 2 diabetes is not very important it's independent of that such shows mother's womb is more important so if now we'll give an example how how can prove this animal experiment has proved that in the model is mr rat the low genetic risk of diabetes when exposed to hyperglycemic media of goat or rats utero significantly increase the risk of diabetes in adult life so the experiment has proved that maternal the uterus is very important hyperglycemia is very important animals now somebody may question what about the human beings this also proof is there here maternal hyperglycemia and progeny the offspring is a pima indians who were in utero when their mother had diabetes have a greater risk of diabetes compared to them than earlier siblings born before the mother developed diabetes 
So both animal experiment and as in met an in human being it has found that maternal uterus is more important here be that means intact milio is more important than the innert destiny. So now we, we all accept this concept of intact milio because intact milio what could happen here we go to next slide here hyperglycemia in pregnancy in most of all of us know about that. Gestational diabetes is defined as any degree of glucose tolerance with onset or first recognition due to pregnancy. Now, why do we worry about that? Why we are concerned about GDM? Here we are another, another view I will take here. Then, if you take a pregnant mother with, with, with pregnancy, gestation diabetes mellitus may play a crucial role in the increasing prevalence of diabetes and obesity. That means or you have to focus on the gestational diabetes mellitus here, that's what this, this statement says. And not only that, if you with this GDM, insulin resistance, increased atherogenic lipid profile, inflammatory markers, hypertension, endothelial dysfunction, lead to increased risk of CVD. So we are, we are almost coming to the point that GDM is a mother of non chemical diseases. So at this third point, we have accepted now. So having accepted the with mother not common diseases, next step will be here. This is, I'm going to another angle here. Detection of diagnosis of GDM is possible because all of us know diagnosis, number of countries are given, number of guidelines, it is possible. What we are, what I would like to share with you will be, what we are concerned is prediction of GDM. Detection is a different thing, prediction is a different thing. What we are concerned in the Prediction of GDM, how to predict the lady is going to become GDM in the future. So that we can prevent development of GDM and its consequences. This, this message is very, very clear. Prediction is necessary. Once you predict, then you can prevent. So now that we have to take both prediction, when prediction of, we can make, and when we can take the steps to prevent. So we will see here. When to test to predict GDM? The next question. That is very important here. Then recently, about few years ago, in the month, the year 2018, the blood test may identify gestation diabetes risk in the first trimester. This is the National Institute of Health has come out with this type of uh, statement saying the blood test may identify gestation in the first trimester. That's all they told. And one more statement they made, they said which week, then which week they said was gestation weeks prediction of GDM. I told you previous, for the previous slide, prediction, that is very important. Then we go, go for the prevention. Gestation weeks of prediction of GDM will be here. A blood test conducted as early as the 10th week of pregnancy may help identify women at risk of GDM. So it is very important message we got from this study, 10th week. So once you know that that is weak, that's going to be a problem, then we can do what, what possible we can do to prove that is happening here. So at a, the glycemic level will be there, it's another important uh, information, at higher AOC levels of A5.3 or 111 milligram blood sugar, compared to those without GDM, that is 5.1. That means any woman at the 10th week, when the check happened to be having A1C 5.3 or a 2 or postman pressure more than 111 pressure, probably she is at the risk of GDM, that is a prediction. Now we got at least some answer for the problem. This pressure value is going to predict GDM and 10th week is the most important. Predict the weeks a week, you know, now we also know the blood sugar level at which the GDM can occur. So having known both, what steps we can take to prevent? Here the, the air, and I told you in the previous slide, significance of 10th week pregnancy. Why 10th week is significant? Why not other weeks? Any, any national institute told 10th week of pregnancy, but they didn't know why, but they just mentioned 10th week of pregnancy. Now this answer, now each islet cell functions as an endocrine origin. Yet this slide is very very important which gives an answer for that question. Why 10th week? The 10th week is important because here the, in the human pancreas begins to develop 4 weeks after conception. And first insulin deposits 
can be found but in week 7 and 8 and next sentence very very important pancreatic ileal cell differentiates at 10th and 11th week of gestation and recognizes and responds to matter uh, glycemic at 11th week of gestation so that is what that shows 10th week is very important for the forest in the war you want to proven gdm and the 10th and 11th week play major role in the progression of gdm because now we know 10th week now we know the answer what being 10th week then also we know blood sugar levels should be above 110 mg we will get a problem and so prandial glycemic level that can be considered as abnormal that is then only you know that uh, that sugar has to be controlled very beautiful work done by uh, hermandas he says pattern of glycemia in normal pregnancy many of us done it also but anyway this beautiful work is done uh, in, in 2011 latest one fasting is 71 plus or minus 8 is the normal value the normal pregnancy and 2 less than 10 that means he gives the target of 200 blood sugar post prandial blood sugar no post glucose it is a post prandial under learn you may ask me what food they will take but whatever food is taken it will produce only the same level if you are a normal person it won't go up it is will be less than 10 so under 10 is a target value which is suggested now 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 i am going to discuss another important angle here first time NH study in 2018 suggested A will see a 5.3 otherwise we call 2 or PP blood sugar 1 and 10 at 10th week predict GDM okay he has told like that then what then what has happened he told but but so far no explanation has been given for prediction as well as a proof of GDM he stopped with the 2018 out of that no progress was made so we, we taken up that particular point now we know but so far no explanation has been given for the prediction of GDM or for prediction of GDM and then here uh, this is where it comes from from us from from India we concept conceptualize that maternal to people from PPBS should not cross Having told that a particular first, first slide, first line, conceptualized, now we conceptualize that maternal tour PPV should not cross more than 100 mg at 10th week. That's very clear. As fetal beta cell starts secreting insulin around, 10, which I showed in the previous slide, pancreas, uh, maternal starts secreting insulin around 10th to 11th week of pregnancy. So now we have, we have at least half the way we cross. We know which week will predict, and we now we know which blood sugar is going to predict GDM and which week. So our number of information we have got got. Now we have to get, put everything together how to go about prevention of diabetes. Now we'll go again here, fetal hyperinsulinemia and maternal glucose. This is a very important physiology here. Fetal hyperinsulinemia. Well, I, the, we will have to come to the point in future, but I am telling you earlier itself what is the physiology here. Fetal hyperinsulinemia will favor a persistently high glucose flux even at times when maternal blood glucose is normal. That is, that is, that, that will come back to come back out sometime. But this, this information I would share with you now itself. So, the obvious implication is that glycemic control needs to be optimized very early in pregnancy to prevent the establishment of fetal hyperinsulinemia. So the statement here is when the when woman can see from that time itself there should not be any high blood sugar so that we should not develop mother should not develop the, the child the fetus should not develop hyperinsulinemia. And how to link this maternal hyperglycemia with that of Fetal hyperinsulinemia. I will come here. How to link fetal handling of maternal glucose? Fetus has more role to play the early weeks of pregnancy to to, to matter the to handle the maternal glucose. Now you will see here example again so that we can we can follow what what I have to share with this with this idea. Example of fetal handling of 
metal glucose, which we never thought it has been published recently, but we never gave much importance. Now I am giving importance for this particular statement made, for example, of fetal handling. Here, I will give an example here. Weeks, postpartum blood glucose here, 10th week, example, which, which I never knew. Happen to you, for example, wanted to, I want to give figure, want to, yep, example 1 to 6, but of course, when you see blood sugar 1 to 6, most of OBG obstetrician will not trigger at all, because it is not known that at that time, 1 to 6 is abnormal. We never knew about that. So, they said, okay, this is okay, we can continue diet only. Then again, on the 12th week, you see again on the 12th, oh, okay, nothing has happened, she is normal. So we conclude saying post my blood sugar comes down without any interruption. That is where the problem starts. How the wanted disease came to 112 without intervention? How? This is the answer for all the problem. Here what happened here you see, 11th week as I told you earlier, secretion of fetal insulin starts. This brings down metal glucose which is not desirable. It brought it down from 1 to 12, who brought it down? Fetal insulin, fetal beta cell. Because it secretes insulin, by 10th to 11th it will secrete, then it brings it down. So, we have done nothing for the uh, uh, mother, automatically the fetal beta cell starts secreting insulin and brought down. Them. But this is not a good thing to happen. It is not desirable because maternal glucose does not go up Due to, due to fetal insulin handling of the metal glucose. It has a different, different physiological action. So, metal glucose does not go up due to fetal insulin and nothing, nothing we did for the metal glucose. And because of that, this is very important statement. When maternal PPB is more than 100 mg, this is recorded. In the early weeks of pregnancy, it is advisable to take immediate steps to bring, bring PPS less than 110 mg, at last she will develop GDM and the consequences. So, in early pregnancy, 110 mg, if you, don't, if you record, very, very dangerous time, you must bring it down 110 so that, otherwise, that lady who has 110 mg, anywhere in the week of pregnancy, she will develop GDM. So, the message will be here, your blood sugar should be less than 110 mg before 10th week. The more than 10th week, you can't do anything about that by the time fetal insulin starts secreting. So, I will give another answer here. Contribution to glucose gradient here. This is another interesting study. It shows, suppose we take a mother, glucose, M mother, phi F for fetus. Maternal glucose goes up, immediately it goes down to the fetus compartment. Maternal epithelium pushes glucose into the fetal compartment. And then what happens here? Fetal hyperinsulinemia pulls the glucose. So it pushes, uh, um, a mother's glucose pushes glucose, and fetal hyperinsulinemia pulls glucose so that insulin is secreted in the fetal compartment. And so then it, glucose and insulin will result in the adiposity. That is what uh, what we want to get as a macrosomic fetus. The fetal glucose steal across the placenta to the fetus. This is an important event which occurs in the in the fetal in the in the in the, in the train compartment. Now again we will summing up here what I told you previously we, we take like this guidelines to screen glucose and intolerance at appropriate gestational mix. Here here this message is again very very important. Here imagine I am going to give a picture here how, how we stand the last of the weeks and 20 the onwards. All of us know in 20th week onwards, it's the second term, second term is going to start. Insulin resistance starts due to hormonal changes, tumor can factor, HPL, progesterone, all these hormones as insulin resistance. So, it's hormone, uh, because of that, see, a mother may request, request more insulin. Now, because this is what this, we, for many, many years, you should recommendation even now. For screening 24 with many people still stick to 24 20 for screening for the GDM. Now, why what happened to us? What is happening for us will be here. 10th week PPBS 110 mg, as I told you earlier, and 11th week 
fetal blood cell secretion starts. This, this is a fundamental thing which you all, which many of us don't know. I am I'm sharing with you all this information. Now because, why I am telling here, this particular point will be here, here it will be here. Presently, the recommendation to test for the glucose tolerance at 10th week is not followed. If I have been following this, things would have been changed. By the same, half of the diabetes in the, in the country would have been vanished. But since we have followed only the 24th week or a first trimester, never, there is important, the 10th week is important, don't tell me about 12th week, first trimester, no, it is not important, it is finished, still that uh, mother will develop GDM. So presently, the recommendation to test for the glucose tolerance at tenth thing is not followed. That is the reason why we get most both hyperinsulin, hyperglycemia of the mother and hyperinsulinemia of the fetus, promote fetal ad adiposity and results in the offspring of developing male child obesity, IgG diabetes, female child born will become obesity, GDM diabetes, and infection cycle. That's what happens. The whole problem is nobody told us to screen for glucose tolerance and if I had done that earlier, as I told you, we would have almost 50 to 60 percent of our diabetes would have been managed. Now, this is the reference is also is there. Now, now I told you, 10th week. Now, the another important, important message I would like to share, ideally it is to test for glucose tolerance at 8th week. I said 10th week. But I am here, I am telling you, in the next step I am going here, I did a test for glucose tolerance at 8th week, 2 months. Why? There should be some reason. Why I am telling 8th week? Because this is only our concept. I am telling this, my, my, I hope I am sharing with my friends concept. Why 8th week in pregnancy? Because we know prediction of GDM is 2 hour PP is unintermittent at 10th week. That we are, now with this particular point, all of us would have got in our ideas. Fine. Now the second point will be here, ends at 8th week itself PB has to be estimated. Why? Why 10th week is a problem. Why should we do it 8th week itself? Because we need uh, some time because here this is another important statement. In case of PBBS is more than 100 milligrams at 8th week, suppose we do the 8th week test, a grace period of 2 weeks is available to attain PPV is less than 100 milligrams at 10th week. So, hope this is the message I would like to share. This by 8th week we test. If you know it is more than 100 milligrams at that time itself, you can use grace for 2 weeks to bring it down less than 100 milligrams at 10th week. If you do only on 10th week, you can't do anything. But 10th week is a problematic week. 10th week you do is on 10, within a week's time, beta cell will start secreting insulin. So, you have to start start moving from earlier weeks and proceed so that by the time 10th which is, which is a very awful time you will bring some blood pressure will come down so that beta cell of the fetus will not secrete insulin. Example, why? Because I, eighth, week, eighth week, if suppose you find out routine, the same thing I earlier told you, early weeks of screening is very important. In eighth week, at least at eighth week, 110 milligrams, Intervention here you can give with the MNT or with metformin. At 10th week, it comes down to less than, but within that week, two weeks' time, grace period from 110, which is a dangerous blood sugar value, by 10th week, see 8th week, nothing will happen. But 10th week, it comes, it will again feed a little bit as a secretion. You are on grace period two weeks, and then 11th week itself, it is not going to cross 110. So what will happen is no increase in fetal epitaxial insulin secretion. So that's what we want. We don't want fetal epitaxial secretion occurs. So if we start taking earlier itself, we start taking care of the mother, uh, pregnant woman from eighth week itself, we can prevent the tenth week is a problematic week for the mother. So this is what happens. Suppose tenth week only you do the blood sugar. Imagine it. Tenth week, I told you, is important. Suppose you do tenth week, at a most under milligram, you cannot bring it down. Suppose sometime it happens, tenth or eleventh week, not enough time available to achieve less than under ten milligrams, and then here fetal beta cell secretion starts increasing. Once fetal beta cells start increasing, it cannot come down. 
So it will slowly get increasing and mother will develop slowly gestation diabetes mellitus. This is the important message. So on 10th week, you should not go on 10. For that, you must take early reaction itself. So how, how the early is we early should be taken here? This is a very important slide. We take embryonic stage is over till 9th week. After 8th week. After 8th week is over, fetal stage. So you are in the, suppose you test the blood sugar 8th week, you are in embryonic stage. The moment you cross 9th, it will fit as it. Why, why, why this very important will be here, embryonic stage. If 100 nanograms milli per day, MNT and metformin 250 BD has to be started and continued. Target glycemic to be obtained is PPBS is 99 plus or minus 10. If why because eighth week metformin is safe, please this status please note this. Metformin is safe as embryonic stage is over by eighth week. Suppose eighth week you don't give none of us will recommend. So of course PCOS they, they give from the beginning itself. In this situation, metformin is safe as embryonic stage is over by eighth week. So you are from eighth week or the end of the eighth week, you can start metformin. Again, I want to share another information here. Over diabetes may be advised to use metformin as an adjunct. Safe to use metformin at the eighth week onwards because it is in the eighth, eighth week it don't, it don't have any problem. So now I am going to I am going to another angle now. Prediction to our PP more than 110 milligrams. Prevention to our PP postnatal blood sugar less than 110 milligrams. More and less. Now I recently I saw on publication here. Uh, the the importance of uh, giving metformin at what time at intervention should be done is very early to be done it. Admission of metformin out of 12th week will not be effective in preventing GD. Nobody has so far uh, uh, in the preventive medicine, in the preventive GDM trials, after giving them 12th week, none of them could prevent GDM. They all become GDM. So what I have been discussing now, start Worry and start eighth week itself and bring it down by 110 by 10th week. So after 12th week of using metformin, you will not have any beneficial effect. So now I will come to answer here. Scope for prevention of GDM. What is the scope? You got a scope here. PPBS more than 100 milligrams at 10th week is the crucial time during pregnancy for prediction of GDM. That is all of us know. Now how to prevent here? Hence, intervention has to be started at 8th week itself if PPB is more than 110 milligrams. 8th week because fetal blood cell does not start insulin secretion, embryonic stage, and metformin is safe. That is why I put it in, in a bracket, safe. So, if PPB reaches more than 110 milligrams, fetal blood cell insulin secretion starts at 10th to 11th week. So, you can prevent. Not only predict, you can also prevent by start screening by 8th week itself and bringing up the blood sugar level of mother to be less than 110 itself. No point in trying to 110 at 10th week. By the time 10th week reaches, the sugar should be less than 110. So, premortal prevention, ideally peak metal or postpartial blood sugar should be around 110 milligrams from preconception period and early peaks of pregnancy. Whatever you do, you must do. Is this is the level you must maintain. And then else it is necessary to optimize metabolic control early in pregnancy, this is necessitate pre-pregnancy planning. Now this is what I want to share with you the work we have done here. Long thousand people with skin gestation trimesters. We have been following only this first trimester 140 and above, 31 percent, and second trimester 42 and finally 25. There are almost 60 percent, more 60 percent of the women that develop the GDM in the first half of pregnancy, most importantly 31 percent. Now what I am saying here, I wish 
This study was done recently also. Uh, 2007 also we have done the study of trimester and also in 2016 also this publication was done. I wish I didn't know at that time, at that time should have used two PPBS more than 100 mg in the first trimester for prediction of GDM not ever at that time. It was, it was, I feel very sorry. I wish I had known this earlier. Otherwise, I think as I told you, by the time you would have proved the, 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 the GDM in the country and the diabetes. So, now at least now, this generation now should be think about that and start, develop, uh, start screening for GDM in the 8th week itself and bring the blood sugar less than 100 mg at 10th week. So, any value about normal, don't give grace. Unattend is normal, unattend only. Then unattend level is abnormal. So any value of a normal is abnormal. Let's say that this in, in the period, there is some religion say, Lakshman Rekha. Cross the Rekha, you get a problem. So any value of a normal is abnormal. So friends, glycemic level for diagnosing different glucose tolerance during Detection, GDM, which all of us are possible, one for all of us know about that. And if we, we have introduced one more category, gestational glucose intolerance is more than 120 mg. What we are introducing now, probably in future, a classification of GDM will be like this. Early gestational glucose tolerance, EGGI, 10th week, is when you get this 100 mg, probably that lady, you must classify them. 100 mg and above, 10 mg and above is DGGI, 120 and above is DGI, GDM 140. So this, this, this person also prone to develop GDM and diabetes in the female, NAGT in the male. So friends, aims may female gender, the key to diabetes prevention, start with the healthy pregnancy, low birth weight, large was the age and was good result in the adult life, elevated risk for obesity, diabetes, hypertension and CVD, intergeneration transfer, transfer risk occurs and then the link to the LCD epidemic is only maternal health, that is when the answer sold, less key sold, female gender key to the profession. So provision of LCD, twenty percent again the LCD should start during interactive period and continue throughout life from early childhood. Prevention of type diabetes must begin in the intro and continue throughout the throughout the life 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 course. So friends, here the womb is more important than the home. So we must take care of the pregnancy. It all starts in intro. That's the important thing. Hence for we suggest diabetes for regeneration, focus on the fetus for the future. That is the only way of promoting diabetes. So I said here this is a nice photo here. One blood test prevents transgeneration transmission of diabetes. If she is going to GDM, a child, male child with diabetes, or female, that child has GDM the transmission occurs. So one blood test is doing pregnancy and bring it down to less than 10, we can prevent diabetes in the world. I hope so. So friends, ladies and gentlemen, this may be my last slide. I request all of you, let's all pledge to prevent diabetes. I think everywhere in your clinic, put the board, let us all pledge to prevent diabetes. See us. Okay. Thank you very much, my friend. Thank you very much. Chairpersons.